So I feel like my job is to heal out loud and be so much myself that every woman who encounters Girl Just Heal feels that she has no other choice but to heal and grow and evolve into the best version of herself because that's exactly what she's surrounded by the moment she enters this space. Hey, homegirls, welcome back to the Girl Just Heal podcast. I'm Nimoya Bayesden and Chad, listen. So how are you doing? How are you feeling? How are you healing? Drop me a comment in the comment section. Let me know all the things. I want to know how you are navigating your healing journey, how you are just navigating life. If you're listening on Apple Podcasts or Spotify, you already know, drop a review, leave a five-star rating. I truly, truly appreciate y'all so much. So happy Valentine's. Day home girls happy love day I hope that Cupid has came and found you and baby if Cupid has not found you today then let me be the first to just send you all of my love and just say happy Valentine's Day to you and just know that if you don't have a Valentine this year home girl it is okay baby love on yourself a little extra you have so much to be thankful for if you are listening to this right now that's enough for you to be thankful for for. We thanking God for life. We're thanking God for health and for strength and the ability to love ourselves because that's the most important love. Self-love, baby, I don't know. Like it feels good to be loved by people around you. But when you experience that true self-love, it is just a feeling that's unexplainable. I really can't even explain it. But if you know, you know. So again, happy Valentine's Day. Drop me a comment. Let me know what did y'all do today? Okay. Or if you ain't done nothing yet, then what are you going to do for Valentine's Day? And if you're listening to this after Valentine's Day, I need to know what you did. So drop me a comment. Let me know check in. I want to know what y'all had. You know, y'all might have some little ideas for me next year that I can implement or something. So again, homegirls, happy Valentine's Day. And I pray that this year is the, is the year that you love on yourself a little extra because you deserve it, homegirl. Okay. So we're going to go ahead and get started. We're going to start with shouting out a homegirl. Now this review comes from Golden Life Love 7251. And this is is from YouTube and it says such a beautiful analogy your podcast has been such a blessing to me over the last seven months of healing from a breakup you are doing the Lord's work and I really appreciate you listening to God's call to start the podcast and Facebook group keep doing great things and I hope God opens all the doors and windows of blessings to you Oh, thank you so much, Golden Life Love 7251, for this amazing review. I'm so thankful that this podcast has been able to help you over the past seven months. And baby, we have many more months to go, okay? So let's heal, let's grow, let's evolve together. We are stepping out, becoming the best version of ourselves together. But I truly appreciate this review because it really warmed my heart. And thank you so much. Thank you. So... Y'all know we are about to go ahead and get into the most favorite part of the episode, okay? So, y'all know it is time for the prayer cards. Prayer cards. It is time for the prayer cards. Prayer cards. Eight, eight. Prayer cards. Prayer cards. Eight, 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 eight. Hey, it is time for the prayer cards, y'all. Are y'all excited? It is time for the prayer cards. All right, let's see what word we are going to have today. Let's see what God is going to say to us today. Y'all, it is Valentine's Day. Wow, it is Love Day. People call it Love Day. And, you know, just do something nice. Whether you buy yourself some chocolate, whether you, because a lot of times with, well, we know that this day, if you got a special somebody in your life, like y'all normally will do something, the ladies will get roses and chocolates and balloons and bears and all those things. But if you don't have anybody in your life to do that for you, baby, do it for yourself. Okay. Do it for yourself. You will be thankful um, that you did it. You'll be thankful that you went out and you did something something nice for you on this day because if we're not careful if we don't have nobody on 
Valentine's Day, we can go into a little bit of a depression or just feeling down and feeling sad because we feel like, don't we deserve love? I'm the first to tell you that, baby, yes, you do deserve love, but self-love is the best love you can ever have in your life. So go out and grab you something, do something extra nice for you today. So let's get into this scripture. Our scripture comes from Psalm chapter 91, verse one. And it says, those who live in the shelter of the most high will find rest in the shadow of the almighty. Come on. Listen, those who live in the shelter, in the protection of the most high will find rest in the shadow of the almighty. Oh, listen, let's go to another version. This scripture is so um, I was talking to a friend the other day and I was just uh, like we were talking about how um, our days were going. And I was just saying, like, don't stress, just rest like rest, because sometimes life will produce things for us or bring up things. And we are just so stressed out where we can't rest. And this scripture, just like when I read this, it was a reminder to just rest, no matter what it is that you are facing, no matter what it is you are dealing with, find some time to rest and not stress out so much about the things that are going on. Because sometimes that's what we can do. We'll stress out, especially about things we can't change. Homegirls, listen, quit stressing about the things you cannot change. The only thing you can do is try to make the situation better, but stressing about a decision that was made, stressing about a mistake that was made, stressing about something that was already said that you can't take back, it doesn't do anything. It, it harms you more than it does good for you. It just, it, it keeps you in a place where you just going back and forth like, man, I shouldn't have said that, or I should have did this differently. The, the reality is you can't go back and change it. You can't go back and do it differently. So now you have to just be cognizant of how you are moving from this moment forward. So learn from what you did, but move differently this moment forward. So we're going to go to another version of this scripture. I love the book of Psalm. I really do. Like Psalm is just one of my favorite books of the Bible. So Psalm chapter 91, and we're starting at verse 1. OK, this is New Lemon Translation version. It says those who live in the shelter of the most high will find rest in the shadow of the almighty. I think that was the same as the scripture. So let's go to the Amplified version. It says he who dwells in the shelter of the most high will remain secure and rest in the shadow of the almighty whose power no enemy can withstand. Whew. One more time for the Amplified Version. It says, he who dwells in the shelter of the Most High will remain secure and rest in the shadow of the Almighty. Who is the Almighty? Whose power no enemy can withstand. Listen, that's like being in just the safest place ever. Like, you know, growing up, I think all of us had this one person in our lives that we would tell people we was going to go get. Like I have a niece and she would say, I'm going to tell my mama because she feel like her mama can take anybody. Like her mama, if you stressing me out, I'm going to go tell my mama. If you telling me no, I'm going to go tell my mama because to me or not me, but to my niece, her mom is like the strongest person ever. And that's like her safety net. And that's her protector. That's who who's going to show up for her when nobody else does like mama can fix it. This is how, like, I just feel like my niece is like, if can't nobody else do nothing, my mama going to be able to fix it with this scripture. It says whose power, no enemy can withstand. Listen, I will remain. It says he who dwells in the shelter of the most high will remain secure and rest in the shadow of the one whose power, no enemy can withstand. Just think about that for a minute. You resting in God and nothing, nothing can destroy you. Nothing can take you out. It probably you probably be tempted. You probably have some trials and tribulations, but even the trials and the tribulations and the things you go through, none of that is more powerful than the almighty. <laughs> none of that you go through is more powerful than the almighty. No devil that's attacking you, no demon that you feel is just on your back and won't let up. Baby, that ain't more powerful 
than the Almighty. And and that enemy, that demon, that devil, it ain't going to be able to stand long. It ain't going to be able to stand long, baby. Once you call out to the Almighty and you like, God, I need you to show up. God coming through. He coming through and you are going to get rest. You are going to be so secure. The, and I always say this, but being in the arms of God is the most safest place that you can be. And I, I live by that because I know how God be out here protecting me. I know how God be out here and he really be looking out. God be saving us from danger seen and unseen. Things you ain't even know what's going to happen. And then all of a sudden, like, have you ever experienced a time in your life where all of a sudden, like something happened, but it was already a way of escaping? You was like, you just go back in your mind and think about how you were moving differently from like months prior. And you like, this is why this happened. This is why that happened. Because God was already working it out. He already had a plan for you. God already had a way of escape because he knew that the devil was going to come. He knew that the temptation was going to be there, but he had already planned for you to escape all of that and for you to come out of that. So being in his arms, listen, let me read this one more time. I love this scripture. I'm going to have to go study this scripture. I'm going to have to do more with this scripture because this scripture really touched me today. Psalm chapter 91 verse one, he who dwells in the shelter of the most high will remain secure, will remain protected will remain secure and rest in the shadow of the almighty whose power no enemy can withstand baby your troubles they ain't got nothing on on god (laughs) the things you going through it has nothing on god and how he gonna show up for you those people that are talking against you Baby, that ain't got nothing on God. It can't withstand that. You can't put it in the boxing ring and you expect your trials and tribulations to win against God. It ain't going to work. It's not going to work. And God ain't even got to do too much. God can just blow on your trials and tribulations and just like that is done. Just like that is over with. Nothing, no enemy can withstand the almighty, the power that is in his hands is just, whew, listen, oh my goodness, that scripture will have me going on and on. But y'all bookmark that Psalm chapter 91, verse one. That is the scripture we came from today. And so we are going to go ahead and get in this episode. So as I was thinking about, I'm like, Lord, what should I talk about on this episode? And of course, since it's Valentine's Day, my mind first went to, oh, I want to talk about love. And I want to talk about, you know, all of the things to to signify what this day represents and all of that. But God did not take me in that direction. And it's been something that has really been sitting on me heavy. And normally when like a time topic or get dropped in my head or or something dropped in my mind I stew on it for a little bit and I'm just like Lord if this is meant to be like I'll just I I won't forget it or not even just forget it because I don't necessarily feel like I forget to do certain episodes I really just believe that God takes me in different directions like so it's not like I forget to do any episodes because stuff be coming back up for me but at times when I be wanting to do it God be like no this ain't the time for that but with this one it's like nothing else like my mind was just wrapped around this and I um, started thinking about one of my favorite quotes by Maya Angelou And it says, when people show you who they are, believe them the first time. And I just keep on thinking about that. Keep thinking about that. And I'm like, man, this quote, even though I've heard it for so very long, I'm just like, why does this keep going, keep on coming up? But what I found is that a lot of us deal with people in our lives who are showing us signs and they're showing us the signs that these signs don't even be good signs. These be signs be red flags, as they say. Y'all know the term red flags. It it, it was popping on social media not too long ago. And so sometimes people will show us red flags, but we will ignore them red flags because we don't want that person to be portrayed in that light. Like, I don't want you to break my heart. I don't want you to throw me away. I don't want you to act this way with me because in my mind, in my heart, that's not how I envisioned you to be. But this person has been the same way for so many years, but we'll start ignoring the signs that we see in people just because we love them. We could be blinded by love. We could be blinded by lust. 
Hello, lust is a big thing that we can be blinded by. Like we can be blinded by so many things. The way this person treated me, the way this person is showering me with gifts, the way this person is buying me things. And sometimes we'll be so fine tuned on that that we miss the signs that this person is showing. And so what happens is we start giving people chance after chance after chance. I'm going to give this person a chance. Oh, it's okay. I can give this person a chance. They, you know, they said they sorry and they going to do better. So I'm going to give this person another chance. And it's like, how many second chances are you going to give a person to continue doing the same thing that they've been doing over and over and over again before you realize like this person just ain't going to change. This is just a part of their nature. This is just a part of who who they are, and they are this person at their core, but we don't want to follow those signs. We don't want to, to see this person in this light because I care about this person. I love this person. I'm in love with this person, but you have all these signs. It's almost like you got a big old billboard and they write down all the signs, all the red flags of this person, how this person is, but we looking past it. Because in our minds, we just feel like, no, like I'm the one that can make this person change. Baby, let me tell you something. Homegirl, listen to me. There is nothing you can do to make nobody change. You can't make a man change. You can't make your sister change. You can't make a cousin change, your best friend, your mom and them. You cannot make people change. People have to want to change on their own. They have to go through some kind of metamorphosis inside of them. That makes them want to change, that provokes them to change, something that pushes them and catapults them into change. And you, unfortunately, you being a person like that's just not enough to make people change. Now, it is a way that people can change because they want to be a better person for you. Now, that's still a personal decision that they have to make. They may say all the things like, I promise I'm going to do better. I promise like, I, I, I really, I don't know why I act like this. I really want to be better. And they can say all the things, but if they are not doing things to change, if they still going and they doing the same old things, then their words are just for naught. Like it doesn't really matter what they are saying because their actions are not lining up. And so we'll give people chance after chance after chance to try and prove to us why, how, what you showed me about you, I want you to make me out of a lie. Like, I don't want to believe that about you. And so because we don't want to believe that so much, we'll give them chance after chance after chance. Now, I'm not saying we can't be graceful with people. I'm not saying that we just shouldn't give people chances because I am a firm believer that people do change. People do have the ability to change, and I believe anybody can change. Like, nobody is above reproach when it comes to that. Or I don't cancel nobody out. Like, I feel like even a person that you feel like is the worst person, I feel like God can still touch their heart and they can still change. However... It is not our job to continue to put ourselves in harm's way and put ourselves at disadvantages because we want people to change when we want them to change. And we are exhausting ourselves and we steady pushing against this force. Like, I don't know, like, it's just like we push against the force. And I can talk about it so well because I've been there before. You pushing against a force, trying to get somebody to change when that person don't want to change. And sometimes they don't want to change because you have been accepting them that way for so long that they just like, I know what it is that's going to get you like, yeah, okay, I mess up. I do some say something you don't like, but I know in like two weeks, you're going to be talking to me again. So nothing is encouraging me to change. Now, I'm not saying it's your job to make them change. But what I'm saying is you don't have to sit there and you don't have to deal with what it is that they are offering if they are not giving you what you need to be fed at the stage of life that you are in. If that person can't love you properly, it's okay. Follow the signs. Just get out of that relationship, out of that situation, out of that friendship. If that person is not showing up for you properly, you've already told this person how you needed them to show up. They not showing up for you properly. It's time to chunk the deuces and it's time to move forward. Because if you are not willing to do things that I need for you to do in my life. Now, I'm not just saying 
people doing wild things. Like, I don't want you to be out here and just setting these crazy things like you telling people to go and do something just that you know they shouldn't be doing. But what I'm saying is if you have standards and you have different boundaries, you don't want to be crossed and, and different things like that and things that's helping you heal and grow and evolve and you feel like the people in your life need to be adding to that and they are not, then you have to follow the signs that people are given. Like it's really not um, rocket science. Like this, this journey of knowing who's laboring among you, it's really cut and dry. Like, seriously, and I know that you can have people who put on an outer appearance, baby. These people will put on a show and make you believe that they are just golden. They will make you believe that they are just the real deal. But in the process of all of that, of, of all these shows that they put on, it's something that you're going to get a sign somewhere, some way. But a lot of times we choose to ignore the sign because we like, well, mm, I, I mean, that probably just ain't enough for me to walk away right now. So let me just say, I, I think they can change that. There was something small. And that's usually how it happens. Sometimes, you know, it'd be a little smaller incident and it's just like a slap on the wrist. Like, oh, OK, that, that's not too bad. But then you keep on being in this situation with this person. You keep on being in this relationship with this person and you start seeing those problems slowly start to magnify. And now it's getting worse. Now you're doing other stuff and it's just like it is getting larger and larger each time you do something. But then it's like months ago, you saw this little sign, small sign, but you just decided to say, no, I'm going to just keep on working through that. Now, I'm not telling you you got to give up on people. Please don't take that the wrong way. Like, don't interpret this message as me telling you that you have to give up on people and quit on people because... Let me tell y'all about y'all favorite homegirl. I give people so many chances and it could be a good and a bad thing. Like it just depends on the situation and all that, a lot of other factors. But I just, I don't like quitting on people. I love to, to try and find the good in people. But sometimes that hurts me because I, I try so hard to find the good in people that it's like, man, I'm draining and, and like I'm left exhausted because I've given all of me trying to find the good in you and giving you all these chances and making sure that I'm not giving up on you because I love you and I don't want to give up on you. Like I want to help you get to a place where you can become a better version of yourself and you can become a better person. If you want to change, I want to assist you and help you change. But at what expense am I doing that? I'm giving all of me trying to help you and you really don't even care. You just taking what I give because it's easy when somebody else is just handing you something and you ain't got to do the work. If somebody else doing the work for you, oh, that's easy. Easy peasy, lemon squeezy. <laughs> that That's real easy when somebody else is doing the work for you. But when it's time for you to put some skin in the game and you to do the work, now you don't want to put in the effort no more. And a lot of times we set ourselves up to be at a disadvantage and we really like deal with it hard and get hit hard because we want to see the good in people. Now, you know, sometimes it's just you have to wash your hands with a situation, not saying that you just got to give up on people, but. Sometimes situations just ain't good. Like maybe y'all were involved in like a romantic relationship, but y'all feel like it may be, we may be better off as friends. You are just washing your hands with the situation, meaning the relationship, but then you decide to be friends with this person and it may be okay. So you're not giving up on the person, you're giving up on the situation because this situation is constantly bringing you down. It's constantly leaving you in this whirlwind of emotion. Emotions. And, you know, we we have to get to a point in life where we decide, am I going to follow this sign when the sign is given? Because sometimes we ignore those signs so heavy and we dig ourselves in, even deeper in the ditch because we didn't follow the signs when we first saw the signs. If you know you with somebody and you know, they start off and, and they doing things and they doing everything you want at first. But then 
they just start changing and they start hollering at you a little more. And you're like, well, you ain't never raised your voice at me. And in your mind, and, and, well, in my mind, like some will go off like, hold up. Like now we got to address this now because this is a small sign. And now this is starting to happen. And I don't want it to go even deeper. But sometimes we don't catch it because we can be in, they call it like the honeymoon phase of when you just get in a relationship or it, it's not even just about romantic relationships either. It could be a friendship or an associateship or a family relationship. And it's just like, all right, you start hollering at me. And then I kind of just let that go by instead of following that sign and addressing it right then. I did not just let it go by. And then the next time you hollering, but now you adding profanity in there. Now you're cussing me out. And so I'm like, man, like you, okay. And then you, you ignore the sign and you keep letting it go. And now you hollering at me, you cussing me out. And then you knocking me upside my head. And so at that point, it's like, man, I'm in too deep. But your sign was when they raised a voice at you that first time. When people show you who they are, believe them the first time. It's like a quote that like my mom and my aunts and them would say, and, and just even the older women as I was growing up, they would say things like, if he going upside your head and he's cussing you out and, and he's hollering at you and he's doing all these things to you, cheating on you before y'all get married, what you think he going to do when y'all get married? And that's the same. And like I said, I'm not just even trying to focus on relationships, but you know, it, we have problems in relationships. And so I'm focusing on that, not intentionally, but it is what it is. But even in friendships, if your friend is like, I had a, a friendship. I don't even, I can't even call it a friendship. It was more like a associateship because that was not a friend. Um, but this girl just like had, I would, we were hanging out and she was still like, just small things for me. I mean, just still small things that didn't even like it. I just would rather you act. I'm talking about, it could be a pen. It could be a, just small, minute things. And so me being a person I am, I'm like, Oh, I didn't follow the sign. So I just keep on letting this person come around. And then stuff just keep coming up missing. And I'm like, now, hold up. Now, I know I ain't just misplacing all of this stuff, but it started getting deeper and deeper and deeper because I didn't check the signs at the door. When the signs first started rearing their heads, I could have cut it off and been like, no, nah, you already showed me who you was. But instead, here I am wanting to see the good in people feeling like I shouldn't give up on a person. I should give you chance after chance after chance. And sometimes it comes back to bite us. It comes back and it, it really sits on us because we need to follow those signs and we don't always follow those signs. You know, and I'm not I'm not here to call you out or to make you feel some type of way. I'm, I am here to help you self-reflect. And if you know that you haven't been just following the signs the first time, maybe this is a good time for you to just go back with some things in your life. You may be able to catch some situations right now at this moment before they go any deeper, before they get even worse. You may be able to catch it if you just go back and think of the signs like this person, you know, they ain't been talking right. We ain't been vibing right. They ain't been treating me right. This friend ain't been answering my calls. They've been running me down to other people. I go out in the streets and now I hear my business. We need to check those signs. And we need to follow those signs because if it gets, if we let it keep going, it's, it is going to do nothing but get worse and magnify. And so I just pray that this episode just blessed you. I pray that you pull something from this episode that's going to help you start following the signs. And it's not... It's not that you're giving up on people. It's not that you are not graceful with people. I feel like we all deserve grace and we all deserve to extend grace to other people. Other people deserve that. So we all should extend grace. But 
I'm just saying we got to follow the signs because it can save us from a lot of heartbreak, heartache, a lot of pain, a lot of us having to navigate different situations when we didn't even have to. Like we will be in situations and emotional um, positions and dealing with so many feelings that we didn't even have to waste our time dealing with if we would have followed the signs the first time, if we would have believed people the first time when they started doing some shady stuff so that is it for this episode y'all know how we gonna close it out we are gonna close it with the girl just heal mantra so let's take a deep breath in and out And y'all know that is just to release all the cares, everything that's heavy on us right now, everything weighing down on us, things that has happened over the past week or the past couple of weeks. We are just letting all of that go. And so the Girl Just Heal mantra is, close your eyes if you can. The Girl Just Heal mantra is, I accept myself for who I am. I free myself from all fear. And today I choose to heal. Mm. I accept myself for who I am. I free myself from all fear. And today I choose to heal. I accept myself for who I am. I free myself from all fear. And today I choose to heal. Mm. Let's say it one more time, y'all. I accept myself for who I am. I free myself from all fear. And today, I choose to heal. So thank you so much for tuning in to this week's episode of the Girl Just Heal podcast. I'm Nimoya Bazin. And until we speak again, girl, just heal. All right, homegirl, thank you for tuning in to the Girl Just Heal podcast. We want to make sure that we continue supporting you during your healing journey. So be sure to connect with us on all social media platforms at Girl Just Heal and also join our private Girl Just Heal Facebook community so that you can continue to heal, grow and evolve.